All right, welcome back to new Touch Designer tutorial. And I'm finally back with another one after months and months of not being able to work due to sickness. So generally I've been sick with long COVID for like two and a half years now in total. And uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a wild ride. I really can't recommend long COVID. It's the worst shit that's ever happened to me. But uh, hey, now I'm, I'm better for sure at the moment anyways. I hope it stays and I hope I can continue making stuff with Touch Designer again. I've really, really missed this. I'm really happy that I can at least record this one tutorial now and let's see when the next one will be. So this is actually a project that's been laying around on my PC for like almost half a year now, which I've been wanting to make a tutorial on for ages. But uh, yeah, now, now I finally get to it and it's nothing too like fancy uh, from the like technical perspective. I think it's a very pretty outcome, but it's really just uh, instancing and feedback. So very classic Electronaut video. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, that's exactly what I need now. I'm planning to dive into Pops as soon as I as I can. Uh, I still have to take it slow, but uh, yeah, I'm trying to trying to get back and uh, work more and connect with art again and with with Touch Designer. So here we are, and without much further ado, let's just uh, dive into this and make it from scratch. So as always, I'm just gonna delete everything and we are going to start with a circle sob. So I don't know how long we're gonna still use sobs as soon as we really have pops. I don't think we need this much anymore, but for now, let's start with a circle sob with five like divisions set to five. And I'm gonna add a null to this. And we're going to just convert this into chops first, and then I'm going to convert it into tops. And you're going to see why very soon. I'm going to change the data format to RGB and change the smoothness to nearest pixel. So uh, what we got here is a row of five points with three colors representing the uh, five positions in space that we have here. So. XYZ being represented here as RGB in five different pixels. So I'm just going to add a null here uh, with Alt N and call that pause for position. And we're just going to do classic instancing here. So I'm going to add a an add and add sop, add points and add a convert and convert this to particles per point, particle type render as point sprites. And then I'm gonna add a geo, just a classic geometry, camera. It's good to do this stuff again. <laughs> uh, red, add a render, and I'm gonna put the resolution to 1280 by 1280, pixel format, 16-bit float. And I'm gonna add a line material. Put that on here, par material, turn off draw lines, and turn on draw points. And I'm gonna go down with the Size here to 4, uh, 0.42, set this to white, so 111, and near alpha to 0.24. <laughs> and I'm gonna turn on blending, and that's all we're gonna do here. I'm gonna turn on the uh, turn off the viewers of all the 3D space, and then we're gonna turn on instancing and use our position data as X and Y. So we can better see this. I'm going to add a transform, background color alpha one, comb over background color, add a null, and then call that BG as always. Let's display that in the background. We can barely actually see it. So I'm just going to increase the uh, size multiplier temporarily. So you can see we got these five points representing this shape. I always forget the, <laughs> the name of, I should know that. Let's uh, put that back to being smaller. And I'm going to add a resolution after the chop two. And I'm going to turn this on, even though I'm not sure if it makes a difference. And it just feels good. <laughs> I'm just going to turn on custom resolution and uh, output aspect resolution as well. So again, for now, we might actually want to just have this be like one and one, just so you can see. So we have all these points on here. I'm just going to go to like 150. This is sort of arbitrary. You can uh, change this anytime. 
So the first, like the X resolution actually sort of determines how many points we have. So I'm just going to go down to 50. Um, and you, yeah, you can change this anytime. And here it's actually important now, again, that we change this to nearest pixel. I can show you later. It will actually make a difference uh, as you can already see. Now I'm going to add a transform and set tiling to mirror and the scale here to two. And now I'm going to rotate it. And you're going to see that makes quite a effect. I mean, it looks kind of weird for now. I'm just going to set it to 44. And uh, so you can actually see the effect better. We're going to add a ramp. So now you can see that actually creates a huge difference. And now I'm going to set that to vertical. That looks interesting, right? Not that cool yet, but kind of interesting. The cool thing is what we can do now is we can set this phasing or we can animate this phasing to sort of make it move towards or away from us. So I want to, I want to animate it so it moves towards us. So I'm going to add abs time.seconds times minus 0.2 in there. And now it's actually animated. So it's kind of just like, it looks kind of like it's almost like exploding in slow motion, something like that. And uh, now you can also play around more with the rotation here. So already this kind of little setup is quite interesting. So you can maybe see, and I'm not sure how to actually fix that, that it, it kind of doesn't draw like this one chunk down here. So it kind of doesn't look like we only always miss that part. We can kind of just animate the rotation here, RZ of the geo, abs time dot frame times minus 0.1. That's looking good. Again, I'm gonna go back here and just set this to 44 because that's what I work with. And to make this a bit more organic, we might want to add some noise. So I'm going to add a composite. And then let's add a noise from here. And I'm going to change a few things. So first off, I'm going to change this to just noise. And then I also want to animate this. And I'm going to animate it on two axes. So I'm going to type in abs time dot seconds times 0.1. And then just copy and paste that and change it to 2.2 here. Just kind of moving upwards. And then I'm going to change the period to 1.2. Go down with the harmonic gain 2.3. And actually, so you can see this, I'm going to just put it in there. So, uh, and I'm also going to go down with the amplitude to 0 0.5, 0 0.05. And now you can actually see better like what that does. We also might want to turn off monochrome so it actually affects all three dimensions. So all colors representing all three dimensions. So this is one thing to make it look a bit more interesting. So first off, I might want to go up with the offset so it's closer again. And um, then we can also add a transform. It's not something that you have to do, but just makes it a bit more interesting. Set this to mirror again. And then we can go to uh, the scaling here and go down to like 0.25. And that's about it. So you can you can just see like it, it, it creates even more of a like structural change there. Just a small difference that I think goes a long way. You will see that very soon. Another thing that we might want to do is go to our camera and set it to orthographic and then set the ortho width to one. Now it's kind of too big. So maybe what we might want to do is go here and add a transform 0.35, maybe something like that. So it's kind of more centered. Again, this is all, always not something that you have to do. It's just the way I worked. Uh, you will see the difference later. So now again, I'm going to go down with the point size multiplier to what we had before. So this is what your outcome should look like for what we're doing now. But again, change it to your will later. Okay, so this is sort of all of the uh, the pre part. And now we come to the post part, which is going to be three different feedback loops, because why not? <laughs> so just uh, two standard feedbacks and one fancy one. So just add a feedback top level, going to go down to the capacity to like 0.95. And then we want to add a composition here composite top, change that to over, put that in here and drag it back onto there. So you can already see it looks much more interesting, right? It looks more like it's kind of this 3D shape or like this flower that's moving towards you. So I already really like that. And you can already play now, for example, again, with the rotation and everything. Uh, or for example, you can also go to the resolution and play around with it being interpolated instead of the nearest pixel function there. But uh, yeah. 
feel free to mess around with that. We're going to continue with another feedback loop, the main feedback loop, sort of. And yeah, so feedback, uh, another level, which I'm going to set the opacity to 0.5. Then a transform and a blur. And the blur is just going to be very slight, so like two and two. Uh, so very subtle blur. And then a composite. So I'm going to set the operation to maximum, which is uh, just a small tip on the side. That's often quite a good uh, option when it comes to operating operations here for feedback loop compositing. So we have uh, over and add, which are like the standards difference. I also use quite a lot. And uh, maximum is also quite the good option. Now I want to add a null here because we don't actually want to finish the feedback loop with this composition. So I'm going to add a null and call that FB end and just give that like an orange color so we know it's sort of important and put that uh, up here and drag that back onto the feedback. We also want to have a keyboard in chop so we can reset this feedback. Oh, put that on the poles here. And uh, yeah, now I, I can reset the feedback, which doesn't actually really do much yet. So on a transform, we might want to go up to with the scale to 1.2 on both axes. So that kind of makes this more rippling effect. So it's kind of moving towards you. We also want to add a displace here. So just displace top, displace weight 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and add a noise. So on this noise, I want to set the output again to just noise. I want to animate this slightly, so AVS time dot seconds times 0.1. We want to change a few parameters here. Period 3, no harmonic gain, and monochrome off. Let's put that in here, and now you can see how that's working nicely. Might want to go down a bit with the amplitude, so you can just see like what... That's actually, <laughs> it's kind of like a funny dance. <laughs> yeah, well, anyways, yeah, before we... Keep on going here. I'm going to go back here and add the fancy schmancy component that I built. So I'm going to show you two ways. So one is actually using the component chromatic, chromatic aberration. You can get that on my Patreon. I will link that in the description. So yeah, this is a component that I built for three different chromatic aberration types. And we're going to use mode two, strength one. And the radio fall off is fine like that, 0.8 something. And then we add that in here. You can already see that looks quite nice. And then add that in here. So that looks pretty cool, right? Yeah, now you can mess around with the strength or the radial fall off. I think that, that works well. Yeah, if you don't want to purchase this component or subscribe to my Patreon and get it there, then you can also kind of work on another way. I'm going to show that later on. So I'm going to add a bloom here to make this a bit more interesting. And on this bloom, I'm going to change uh, the parameter here to 0.2. And then this is going to happen. So this actually just means it gets too bright. And as it's still in the feedback loop, right, the feedback loop ends here with the null. Uh, it just keeps on getting brighter. It just turns white unless I press 1. And god damn, I forgot to turn this on. <laughs> uh, well, now there you have it. To, to not have that go white. What we can do is go down to pre gamma here to like 0.46, go down with the brightness maybe to 0.78. These are just values that I found work pretty well. Might want to go up to bloom radius. You can see if you go down, it just it's sort of stronger because it's like closer to the structure. Can't explain it better. Um, but yeah, it still gets kind of bright. Might want to go up with the bloom intensity, uh, bloom fill maybe, but be careful. If you go too high with this, again, it goes white. You can change the threshold if it if it goes white too quickly. So yeah, just, just kind of find values here that, that work. So it's a bit of like messing around to find, but I, I think it, it gives us a nice glow. And uh, because it's still in the feedback loop, it's kind of integrated in the uh, repetition here. So you could also put it at the end, but it doesn't, doesn't look as nice. So it's... Uh, the colors are a bit boring for me and it's a bit cold. So what I like to do here is just add a lookup and a ramp. We're still in the feedback loop, by the way. And uh, why are you complaining now? What the fuck, man? <laughs> just delete it. I'm going to add a little brownish color here. So it's sort of like it's set to red and then just slight saturation. And then you can go up with the like the intensity here, kind of. And that, I think, makes it also look more beautiful. 
And let's go further and do more post-processing because it could be a bit more smooth, right? It still looks kind of very digital. So to make it look even more natural, we might just want to add a, another feedback. So I'm just going to copy the first one, paste that in here and put that in there, put that in here and then put that in here. Let's change the order and let's change the level here down to like the opacity down to 0.8. And maybe you can see a bit of a difference. This is just like there's this again, it's kind of subtle, but there's more like this motion blur in there. I think it just looks a bit nicer. So I'm all about subtlety. So it's <laughs> I think that's an important step. So uh, we could go a bit more intense on the displacement here, I think. So another thing uh, I wanted to show you again is like how you can go without chromatic aberration. So first off, you can just completely ignore it. Another way, if you do want to have those colors, you can add a noise. And on the noise, uh, now we want to change it to input times noise. So it's multiplication. And uh, yeah, you could animate that. I'm not going to go into that now. You can uh, maybe go a bit higher with the offset and then definitely turn off monochrome. So we have those colors. And then you maybe go down a bit with the amplitude. So it actually looks a bit different, but I think it doesn't look worse or anything. It just looks really beautiful as well. It's just sort of, yeah, it's just different a bit, obviously, because uh, you can already see it here. This is maybe a bit smoother and it's it also includes this kind of radial blur. So if you also wanna have that, you can also go to like image filters and then you have radial blur here as well. So you could add that. So it comes maybe a bit closer. You can just, uh, yeah, play around with that. So I'll just kind of try to recreate this, but uh, you can also just get on my Patreon. <laughs> so yeah, feel free to, to play around there, play around with the transform. So it doesn't actually have to come closer to you. You can also make it go away or even make it much stronger, which I also really like. Play around with the bloom, displace all of that. If you want different colors, you can add that there. You can kind of see the difference if we don't have the feedback. So I think the first feedback is actually quite important. You can mess around with the camera here, with the rotation, scaling, whatever. And then mainly, I think it's fun to play around with this. Uh, I might want to add it, set it again to 44. That's what my initial value was. Or uh, just yeah, find any kind of interesting rotation value here or uh, messing around with the scaling. So you can see it actually sort of goes too bright. Yeah, but uh, yeah, changing the scaling makes a difference. You can change the ramp here, for example, like the period. So it kind of gets repeated. So that's something you can, you can play with or it changes to horizontal or change this to uh, radial, circular, anything. So they all have their own kind of look in the end you can always kind of see it best what what it looks like directly here another thing to make this even more like particly and abstract particly is not a word but no now it is uh is that you can add a noise here and that also looks really interesting it completely messes up the whole structure right but often that's that's actually quite nice to to do so you can go down with the offset here so it's more centered uh you can change the period of course the intensity I think it's better monochrome. That's something that you could do. I don't know what happens if we add like a blur here. Yeah, they become more like packed together. You can change the line material. You can even change the uh, amount of divisions, right? It doesn't have to be five. So it looks more like a spiral. Lots of room to play around here. Yeah, if you share this or use this in any way, I'm always happy about credit. You can tag me on Instagram at Electronaut. Thank you deeply to everybody who's been supporting me for the last uh, months and years. It's, it really, really means a lot to me, especially because I yeah, was sick and I couldn't, couldn't actually share anything. It just means a lot to me to have a lovely, lovely community that has my back and even times like that. So that's, that's very special. And thank you for watching. And I hope to see you in the next video very soon.